he's having for the Marlins. Marlins will probably be out of it really quickly. Question is, will he be shut down? Let's go to you, Ruvain, first. What are your thoughts on Rogers' rest of season? Well, Rogers, right now, he was on the IL for a back injury, and now he's on a family medical leave, so he's had a big break in pitching right now. So even if he does come back from this, uh, from what he's going through now, I think he may even need, if he if he if he's out for even longer, for like another week or two, he may even need to go down to the minors and do a rehab start, and that counts as innings also. But those don't count as fantasy innings. That's the problem. So the question is, is he healthy? Is he 100% healthy back from that back injury that they put him on the IL for? Secondly, I think they will max him out, and if they can, up to between 140 and 150 innings, and that's it. I don't think they push him anymore. Um, I think they have another big prospect coming up in, in, in I think, Meyer. Uh, um, their other big prospect, who's, who they drafted a couple of years ago with the number one pick. I think both he's, they don't want, same reason why they're not going to push him. They want him to be healthy. They want to pair him up with his other, with, with Meyer, and make sure that the, they're good together, and they build up. A, 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 a reputation. They want a reputation in the majors right now, but they don't want a reputation of them breaking down. And right now, they don't have that. They're not in it. The Marlins have nothing to win right now. And you know what? Why push them? There's no reason to push them. Well, he's been great. It's 2 four, five ERA. Now, uh, here's an interesting stat thing. Uh, FIP of two six two, which matches, but his ex-FIP is three five six. Wondering, do you guys know why why that's so? What uh, what would make an X FIP much larger than a FIP? Anybody can guess. Uh, it's home runs, probably. Yes, yes. So uh, the the FIP is calculated with his home runs, but what X FIP does, and the big difference between X FIP and FIP for all you stat nerds out there, is it assumes a league average homer to fly ball rate. That means that he's been quite lucky with the home runs. His homer to fly ball rate this year has been five percent which is sort of lucky. XFIP takes the luck out of that and gives the uh, league average. Obviously, some pitchers do control homers a bit more than others, but the 5% is is pretty lucky. I mean, no pitcher can control it that much. Uh, but anyways, uh, I diverge there. <laughs> what are your thoughts on <laughs> Rodgers, Nick? No, I'm always here for uh, XFIP, uh, FIP, Sierra talk, so don't, 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 don't worry about that. Uh, on Rodgers, no, I, I agree with Ruben. Like, I think that, you know, the 140, 150 range, you know, if it, you set the over-under at 150, I'd probably take the under by a little bit. But the Marlins, Marlins don't have any reason besides development to push him on anything. So I think they want I think it's more about them just building him up like to get the innings under his belt than it is, you know, innings necessarily in at the major. So yeah, if they send him down he might need a rehab starter too and that cuts into his his fantasy starts even more. So I uh yeah, I I think he'll reach 14150. He's been just He's been phenomenal. I mean, you you said the numbers already. He's been terrific. The Marlins know he's going to be terrific, and they need him to be there. So, uh, you know, as, I mean, as bad as they are, like there's there's just no reason to handle him with anything but just kind of uh, kid gloves and just keep you know keep it moving. Yeah, ATC was high on him going to the season, and that was confirmed uh, when we had Anthony Bass on the show before the season, and he said. The can't-miss guy on the team is Trevor Rogers, our fifth starter. So that just gave the uh, two thumbs up, and, of course, that was completely right uh, for him. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, some, some more people who are fading, and, you know, as, as the season wears on, um, you know, there are people who had succeeded this year, um, but, you know, we don't think that they're going to be as good going, f- going forward, either regression or whatever. Um, so let's all go through, uh, maybe everyone give both a hitter and a pitcher that they think we should be fading in our values in the final month. Let's start with hitters. Let's go around the horn. Let's start with you, Nick. Who is a hitter that you think uh, will regress, who will fade in the final weeks? So at risk of getting on Alex Chamberlain's uh, hit list, I am going to say Nelson Cruz is the guy I'm going to be fading. And he'll probably prove me wrong by you know, hitting 10 home runs in his next 10 games or something crazy like that. But he is like uh, he's you know he's still giving you some power. That's fine. But he has had uh, you know the average has been tanking lately, and you know second you know in the ninety two plate appearance in the second half, not including tonight, he's got a one eighty three batting average. He's got a two eighty two WOBA, uh, six sixty five OPS. 
uh, not terrific. He's also, you know, uh, I I don't trust. This is this is just a general fantasy rule of mine. I don't trust anyone on the Tampa Bay Rays. I, I always assume that management is out to uh, screw fantasy players, even though they obviously aren't. But I, uh, you know, he so he's got. He doesn't have splits problems so much that he's going to ever be sat. Obviously, he's going to play, but he's Cruz. He's been much better against left-handers than he has against right-handers this year. He's got a you know an 85 point difference in his OPS, a 40 point difference in his WOBA, and you know he has been feasting on some excellent uh, and by excellent I mean terrible. AL Central pitching for a few years now, and now he is in the AL East, which he gets a lot of park upgrades, obviously, uh, not at home. But he's going to have to face a lot uh, better pitchers, and just his recent results have not been great. I don't think he's going to fall off a cliff, but at some point we have to fade the 41-year-old uh, power hitter. Like I'm 41. I know <laughs> Nelson Cruz, obviously a much better 41 than I am, but, uh, I know his body's barking at him somewhere. Is, is Nelson Cruz a hall of famer in your mind? <sighs> I mean, I, without like looking at the numbers, I would say no, just cause you know, it's not a late start, but like a late start on like this insane power. Like, I, I don't know what his career war is, but you know, first blush, I, I would say no. What do you think, Ruby? No, I don't think he's a Hall of Famer. He's not at the 500 home run plateau yet. He only has 440 for his career. His career war is 41.2, which is okay. Is it Hall of Fame good? Yeah. Uh, borderline. Um, his career batting average is 278. I, I, I don't, I don't see him as a, as a Hall of Famer, he's had a very a lot of very good seasons. He's I'd say he's borderline, but I wouldn't I would put him below the border as to anything. I wouldn't put him in the Hall of Fame. Is Joey Votto a Hall of Famer? Yes. Votto has three hundred and twenty homers, obviously a much higher average, three hundred three average, uh, but high, higher average, and and also what plays against Nelson Cruz is that he's just a DH. It's right. harder for DHs to get into the Hall of Fame in general. While Joey Votto, in his prime, was a very and and he's still a very good first baseman, so that plays into it also. Yeah, I mean uh, Edgar Martinez only three hundred and ten, uh, three hundred nine homers. Uh, did have a three twelve career batting average. I don't know. I the the peak of Nelson Cruz was really really hot, and that peak lasted a while. I mean, from twenty fourteen all the way through uh, twenty twenty, he hit two hundred and sixty homers with a two eighty six average, and that's only uh, seven seasons, including the uh, the uh, COVID shortened season. Uh, that it's a pretty long peak, and that's the bulk. Well, the bulk of of a decade. I think he's close. Um, he'll probably not make it. He'll probably miss it. But uh, I think he's pretty close. I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm a fan of Nelson Cruz's. And, uh, uh, you know, he had a lot of injuries earlier in his season that, you know, cut, uh, you know, 200 at-bats off a season. He could have had 40 home runs all the way up there. And, I mean, what's the difference between 500 and 440 is is, is 60 homers, uh, you know, three seasons that he didn't get hurt in, and, and he's there. Uh, I don't know. I actually, I, I, I actually have a good, I have a good comp for him. How about Carlos Delgado? He finished with four seventy three homers, a two eighty average, and a four a forty four WAR. He's not in the Hall of Fame, and right now, the Nelson Cruz is, isn't at that level yet. So if Delgado's not in the hole, then Nelson Cruz is not in the hole. That's a great, great comp. Yeah, it's a good uh, comp. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we we agree, or at least uh, it's close. But uh, he looks like he falls. Just short, but uh, as far as the rest of the season, I don't know. I think uh, extraordinary guys do extraordinary things, and sure, the batting average will go down, but I think the power remains. Um, all right, Ruvain, you have a, a fade for the final month? Yes, for a hitter, I have Brandon Crawford. He's 34 years old so far, 290, 18 homers, 67 RBIs, nine, nine stolen bases, 56 runs which is great, but he's a career 252 hitter. His bat is 25 points over his career level, and he was on the injured list with an oblique issue. He was out for, he was out for a while, he, and in the, since the goal coming back from the oblique issue, he hasn't hit a home run. He hasn't hit a home run since July 10th. That's a little bit concerning because that's, I mean, think about it. If he hasn't hit a home run since July 10th, that means he had 18 home runs before then. 
it's a little bit concerning. He's playing a lot of games. I know he always plays a lot of games, but because of his age and because of the division he's in, he's going to be playing the Dodgers some more. I'm a little bit concerned about him. Totally agree. Regression hit him right in the face. You agree, Nick? Yeah, I do. Regression guy, and also also the in, the injury uh, is, is you know I don't I don't trust guys for a while after they come off of injury and yeah he, he's dealing with some regression you know he's been he's he's hitting still like I mean he has you know six multi-hit games in August so far uh but uh, like Ruvain said he's got he hit a hit a home run yesterday and that was his first home run since before the all-star break like the power has been sapped yeah um, I'll give you two quick guys. Uh, one, Adelise Garcia. I mean, he's really faded very fast, and certainly if you had him on your roster, the trade window's probably squashed on that. Uh, I waited too long in Tatworth to trade him. I still have him, although he's been a little hot this past week. But since uh, July 7th, he's batting a mere 172 with a 241 on base percentage. The guy doesn't walk. The guy strikes out a lot. Um, that's a fade. But how about – I'm going to go with Francisco Lindor. I have no idea why people still value him so high. He's batting average on the year, 228, 11 homers, and he's uh, he's hurt right now. He's not even playing. Um, I mean, it, who has better numbers, uh, Francisco Lindor or Jose Iglesias on the Angels? I mean, uh, Iglesias has eight homers on the year with the 272 batting average. Lindor, 11 with 228. Uh, I mean, you know, I'd rather the, the true, short, and steady Jose Iglesias uh, over Lindor. Like, if I ask you straight up, rest of season, are you taking Iglesias or Lindor? I think it's kind of close is what I'm telling you here. Do you guys agree or am I just uh, too pessimistic on Lindor? It's close enough. Like, I mean, you're, you're speaking my language on, on being down on Lindor. I, I've, I've been down on him for a while because the power hasn't been there for quite a while and he doesn't hasn't run for quite a while. So, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, I, I mean, I guess in a vacuum I would take Lindor, but Iglesias is – you know he's a he's a nice solid piece, and compared to what you have gotten or expecting to get from Lindor, like you have to you have to kind of uh, make up a little rainbow positivity to find like positive things going forward with Lindor compared to what we've seen over the you know the past season and a half. Yeah. Wow. You both you both sound like Mets fans. That's that's crazy. Because <laughs> being so pessimistic about Lindor, no one you know he got off to a slow start. He has. His- oblique injury he was actually the only healthy met in the, from the starting lineup from opening day for, for a really long time so the fact that he got through this far without getting hurt and being on the Mets that's pretty good but his stats just don't hold up I mean if you if you were still playing him I mean if he was still active and not on the injured list a lot of people would have benched him by now I know a lot of people started benching him because you weren't getting the power you weren't getting the stolen bases you're not getting the average what do you have him for? Yes, he's, he's the, you've got a, you got him high up in the draft, but at this point, he, his value is so minimal. And you know what? It, if he comes back, right now he just started fielding grounders. He started doing some batting practice. He hasn't done any rehab games yet. What are you gonna, if you drop him, who's going to pick him up? Think about that. If you drop him, who's going to pick him up? And how much are you going to get out of him? Maybe two weeks out of him? Maybe three yeah. weeks out of him? And you're going to get a 220 batting average with maybe two or three home runs? You can get that on the waiver wire, can't you? Yeah, especially there. You know, I remember before the season started and people were taking Lindor at the one two turn, pick fifteen, sixteen, and I'm like, What? And I had him ranked like yeah, I had him ranked <laughs> like ninth in terms of my ninth best shortstop. And we're like, What? What are you talking about? Can anybody guess what number uh, in Roto ranked shortstop he is? Anyone wanna guess? Uh, I well he's on the Mets, so it's probably gonna be like in in the majors, I'd say he's probably twenty fourth. Twenty fourth, he's worse. <laughs> any guess? Wow. Any, any guess for you, Nick? Thirty-one. He's twenty-seventh. Uh-huh. Jose okay, Jose Iglesias, the twenty-fifth. So uh, uh, you would have been better off with Jose Iglesias for the entire season than Lindor. Uh, have an Ahmed Rosario. Ahmed Rosario in, in uh, Roto is worth almost eight dollars. Lindor is worth two. So you were better off with Rosario than Lindor. <laughs> so, are the, so are the Mets. <laughs> uh, and the Mets have ten more years and three hundred forty-one yeah. million dollars yeah. left. Yeah. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, uh, you can tell I don't didn't like that signing. Um, I did like the trade. I just didn't like the signing. You didn't have to extend him at that price. Um, all right, how about a pitcher who you're fading? Let's go Ruvain first. Okay, I'm again. I am a Met fan, but I'm going to use Taiwan Walker. 
Okay, he's already in the fade. If if you haven't noticed already, he's he's on he's actually on pace for 180 innings, which he's never done before, which is crazy because he's pitched so many innings. Um, he's most was. A